Hi, welcome to Convos with the Euros. I'm Daniel. And I'm Carla. We are a married couple sharing weekly conversations about God, family, ministry, and everything in between. All right, welcome back, everybody, to an episode of uh, Convos with the Euros. Uh, Carla, today we have two very special guests with us on today. If you want to go ahead and introduce them, babe. Yeah, so we have two people that I highly admire so much, and they have just been involved. That we highly admire. Um. (laughs) (laughs) They um, have been district youth director to the Assemblies of God here in the state of Florida. They've been out in the missions field, have done so many things in ministry, and even have some medical miracles to share with us today, and just stories of what God has done in their heart for this generation. So we want to welcome to the podcast, Pastor Edgar and Claudia. Yes, welcome. welcome guys hi guys yes there you go so um we're actually gonna uh be talking with them today asking them a few questions sort of like a interview process for those of you that have listened before we've done this um uh once or twice with guests so it's gonna be the same deal um and just listening to uh their story um and how god is working with them and, and working in their lives so let's go ahead and Let's get started with the first question. Yeah. So thank you so much um, for being here. And the first thing that I really want to talk about is I know last year you guys faced something so similar to what we faced with Daniel's um, survival with COVID and now dealing with dialysis. And I know you have a similar crazy medical miracle story. I know you were Pastor Edgar diagnosed and given no hope, but at the end of the day, God is the one who has the final word. And Amen. I remember yes. um, seeing you guys for the first time, just, you know, months after your ordeal. And we were kind of in the same boat. And I was just able to see that God didn't just do it in our lives, but he does it in other lives, which right. is a huge thing for us. I was, uh, I, was in a, I was in a walker and I could barely walk. And Pastor Hecker was in the wheelchair. So we, were, <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were, you know, just about there. So, yeah. So if you guys don't mind telling us, like, what happened? Um, last year and, and what was that like and, and that medical story? Sure. Uh, well, in, in my case, uh, I've been diabetic since I was four years old. Mm. And because of that, uh, anybody that knows about the diabetes uh, know that uh, throughout the years, uh, uh, certain organs in your body will fail. So in my case, in 2016, during a youth convention, actually, uh, I was feeling really, really bad. Uh, I was feeling really uh, agitated. And my wife told me, you got to go to the hospital. Mm. And, and I remember that, that, uh, that I don't want to go to the hospital, being, being very stubborn because I was at youth convention. And it was actually going to be the speed the light service. And, and uh, at that same time, uh, Daniel, your dad was in the hospital. Yeah, uh, it was. Remember, I remember that. Uh, and in 2016, at the same time, you were yeah. always next to me. Yeah, it was. Uh, you were, you, you're always my bodyguard. I'm putting my <laughs> yeah. bodyguard. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you're a big guy. So uh, and, and anyone that knows Daniel know that Daniel is a big guy. So yeah. he always he, he was the best bodyguard ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I know that I needed no bodyguard, but he was always, you know, he was always next to me, helping yeah. me. And and, and I remember that at, that at that youth convention, I just felt really bad throwing up. But I knew that when I was throwing up, it wasn't a throw up, that high sugar. It was something else. Mm. And so I went to the hospital, to Celebration Hospital in Orlando. Mm-hmm. And they put me right away to the trauma unit. And then they put a, a catheter on me because I had to have dialysis. Yeah. So my change, my life, my life changed on November twenty first, twenty sixteen. Wow. And and I remember uh, uh, that, that during that youth convention, I couldn't finish the youth convention, of course, because I was in the hospital. Yeah. And unfortunately, at that at that same time, well, I mean, your dad got promoted uh, to go to heaven. Yeah. Uh, and and a lot of people when they mentioned it to youth convention that Pastor Daniel Yoro. Uh, passed away they thought that I passed away and mm. and I remember get, uh, my wife getting phone calls mm. uh, you know saying you know hey you know your, your, your husband passed away and and uh, but but that was when my ordeal began yeah and and because of the dialysis uh, for 
uh, that long, pre, pre long, long, long time. Yeah. On, on August 15, 2020, uh, I had a heart attack and they had to, you know, open me up and do a double bite surgery, which at that same time, I got two strokes. Mm. Uh, the doctors on that time, uh, you know, uh, told me that, that I was not going to be able to speak, that I was not going to be able to walk, that I was just basically going to be on a bed. They actually contacted my wife to put me on hospice. Wow. Uh, because I was, I wasn't going to be able to, you know, to come back. But uh, uh, my wife could, could tell you uh, a little bit that they told her that I wasn't going to be able to speak. And she hadn't been able to sleep. And, and, and I opened my eyes, like, right away, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And, and then the first thing I asked for was to call my wife, because uh, I wanted to see her. Mm -hmm. And, but in top of all of that, you know, my mom became ill also uh, uh, on that same process that mm -hmm. I was going through. And, and, but, you know, to the glory of God, I mean, my mom also got promoted October 5th, 2020. Yeah. Uh, but it was all in the same time. Uh, but just to answer your question, you know, you want due to the double bypass and the two strokes, you know, I'm still here, yes. you know, so God, 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 God has been good. Yeah. Uh, it hasn't been easy, but it is a process, but in every process we see that God is there. Amen. Amen. To me, that is so powerful, especially putting myself in the perspective of Pastor Claudia of what you were going through, because honestly, as a wife, you take on all of the information from the doctors. You're having all of these conversations and they're telling you that your husband's not going to make it. And if he does, he's not going to have a quality of life. Um, and then on top of that, you know, you're also dealing with the loss of your mother-in-law and all of this, I mean, on top of each other mm -hmm. was just insane. I lost my grandmother to COVID two weeks before Daniel got hospitalized. It was just, it, it sometimes it's kind of like so many things at once. I want to ask you, how did you stay standing in your faith that God was going to have to do something? You know, 2020 is like the year that everybody's going to remember. And I mm -hmm. remember starting 2020 with all these dreams and all this uh, um, uh, goals that we had that year, we were going to move uh, all the district events to Miami. So we even went to like Miami, the January 1st, and we were having this prayer in Miami. We went to Miami with my family and my husband and I, we were like, we need to go pray for, for Miami. And, uh, and uh, the Lord told me that he was going to put me in the middle of the enemy's camp. That was my year theme that, that year. Mm -hmm. uh, I was going to be in the middle of the enemy's camp. So I told my husband, I feel like this is, this is going to be a year that we're going to have to battle and like, and, and, and we, we need to go there and pray. Little that we knew that <laughs> it was going to be like something that we were not expecting at yeah. all. Like not even in our you know, not even in our dreams, nothing. Mm -hmm. And like my husband was saying, he was sick. You know, he was going to dialysis, but he was okay. He, we were still traveling. We just came, we went that summer to Cuba. So it was normal life, normal life. I mean, I was doing crazy things that I was not supposed to do. <laughs> I, 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 was in the, I, was, I was in dialysis yeah. and I was in the old in Cuba. Yeah. I mean, and, and when I came back, I remember that I was so sick that that I that I passed out in the middle of the parking lot in the Miami airport oh my looking God. for my car. <laughs> and I remember that I, I got into my car and I was going to come to Orlando because I was taking uh, dialysis at home. I was doing it myself. Yeah. It, 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 is a, it is a machine that you could have at home. The home and, hemo machine, that's what you're doing? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, no. Uh, yeah, home hemo. I was okay. doing home hemo. Yeah. Because you, you have the uh, uh, the one that they put in your belly, but the, yeah. I, I didn't do that. I was doing the home hemo okay. um, in my home, and 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 I was I was planning being sick to come to Orlando driving, which is from Miami to Orlando. Those that live in Florida, I know that that's probably like 
you know, three and a half hours. Yeah. And, and I remember that I was so sick. My mom used to live in, in Deerfield, which is uh, close to West Palm Beach. Yeah. And, and, and in that time, during that time. So I was able to make it to her home, but I couldn't walk. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I couldn't do, you know, so I, I just, I got, I, I got into my mom's house threw myself on the couch, and then my mom took me to the hospital. Were you and, with Pastora Claudia, or were you alone? No, I was by myself. Pastora Claudia was in Cuba with the team. Uh, wow. Because I left the team in Cuba to, because I was sick yeah. in Cuba to come back to the U.S., which strength I was able to make it. Yeah. But it was a close call, Danny. I was, it was a close call. My God. Um, I mean, I was I was supposed to be dead so many times. Yeah. And then with dialysis, I went to Guatemala in the middle of a volcano and uh, with another <laughs> team. Man, that's another story. Though. That's another story. <laughs> 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 but, 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 but what I want to say is the dialysis has never stopped me right. or have, have never stopped me to, for me to do the will of God. And, right. and it's not going to stop me either. I feel and like... It's not I don't know maybe if you feel the same way, Pastor Edgar, but I feel like this pro the dialysis made me more stubborn. Uh, oh yeah. It does. Like, it I'm does. just like, no, no, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna push it. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I've yeah, done that, it on that, more that. than one occasion. Actually, when we went to Miami, you know, I don't I don't have any crazy stories there in Cuba. I'll get that. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but when we went to uh, when we went to Miami that we had seen you guys for the first time. Um, I obviously, I don't think anybody saw, but I almost passed out. It was mm -hmm. actually after I spoke with you, I walked because I don't know if you guys remember that walk. It was way too far. Yeah. To the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. I was by myself in the walker. I walked. That's what, that's why I don't go there no more, bro. No, <laughs> that was crazy. It, and I had to walk and I was like almost on the floor. By the time I got outside, Carla had to yeah. run and get the car. It's just, but I just. Oh, I, I, I needed to to go and do something, needed to see people. I needed to worship with family. Yeah. It's wow. things that those things like that that you need to do that that drive you, you know, that, that you know, he you. when we got there, he said, I'm gonna walk. Yeah. I don't want I don't want to go there in my wheelchair. And and you probably understand, you feel like yeah. I, and I feel him, you know, like, okay, let's try it. He said, I don't want to go in there and everybody sees me in, in the wheelchair. And I said, Okay, let's try it. But he stand up in the on, on the walker. And he said, "No, go get me the wheelchair." I say, "Here I go, get the wheelchair." And I say, "Just give up, you know. Nobody's gonna judge you. Just you, you, you gotta do it." And that's why we went into the, into the with the wheelchair. But you see, it. you see what, what? And you're holding it to the last strength that you have. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Yeah. What happened is that that when when you used to being so strong. Yeah. And you know. Uh, you know, I, I was a fighter, right? You know that, Danny. Yeah. And so, and which is that's what I know today. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but, but the thing is that when when you used to being so strong, and then you feel and you try to do the things that you used to do, and sometimes they get really hard to do it. Yeah. Because of your uh, condition. Yeah. You know, uh, it's 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 really hard, but, but that's part of the process too. You know, yeah. like you said, we become stubborn. Yes. Uh, And but but that's where we need to learn how to rest in the Lord. Yeah. And and also, like you said, the community of faith, bro, is it, so important. Yes. That's that's why is anybody's hearing this, and you, a, a man or woman of God, and you know somebody, and you feel in your heart that you need to call them, give them a call. Yes. yes amen. Uh, so because important. because you don't know how a call can encourage uh, somebody. Yes. Uh, especially when, when you're, uh, you know, when you're going through a process, when you're going through a health process and, and, and no matter how old, it could be a retired pastor. It mm -hmm. could be a retired evangelist, anyone, especially retired pastors that, yes. and preachers uh, that used to be so active and all of a sudden uh, you're not as active as before. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you feel giving them a call, giving them a call because, It's, uh, you know, it's going to encourage them. It's going to encourage them. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and when you go in church and see them, stop and say hello to them yes. and pray for them. It, it, it's so encouragement. Yes, it is. I, I remember in Miami because that was my first time 
uh, kind of seeing everybody. I believe for you guys too, it had been a while before you met Correct. a lot of people. Um, so Miami was was our first time, especially after you know the process with COVID. Um, and I think I, I got stopped way too many times for people to pray for me. And um, wow. and I just you know I, at one point I was like, all right, I'm kind of tired, but <laughs> you you come out with so much encouragement. That's right. You know? That's right. And we went there so loved. scared. Yes, yes. We went there so scared. We didn't know what to expect, you know, especially for him. Like people used to see him and, you know, sometimes people, they, they don't mean it, but they look at you like, oh my God, like what yeah. happened? You're like, what did you do that you were like that? And I know they don't mean it. And, and that kind of takes you like down a little bit. So I was scared to bring him there, but he really wanted to go. Uh and but we came out out of that 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 one day that we went we came out so strong and so loved because you know we are family we grew yeah. up in the district i mean we were teenagers going to all these events and we grew up there so and see seeing the love for our family and and for me as a wife and we go back to what was my what, what was i going through with all this uh, me as a wife, I, I told Pastor Nino and Pastor Amner, and probably people that are hearing us, they don't know who they are, but they are our superintendents. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was lucky to have uh, two superintendents at the same time because they were uh, switching, they, they were uh, changing um, superintendents. Pastor, Pastor Nino was leaving and Pastor Amner was becoming a superintendent. So mm-hmm. I had two superintendents with me uh, by my side this, with all, all this whole deal. And I thank God for our family and in, in the district and, and our superintendents because yes. I mean I couldn't do it, but I was by myself. Yeah, I was. I, like I said, we woke up uh, from uh, all these goals and all these things that we had on 2020 to the pandemic, and then uh, in the middle of the pandemic, my mother-in-law gets sick, and then my husband out of nowhere. This is out of nowhere. Uh, he gets very sick and he, they call me at work that he's going to get an operation the next day. And, uh, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't wake up ready for something like that. You know, you wake up to have a regular day and then having to know that your husband is going to have an open heart surgery and your, and your, my mother-in-law's in the hospital. And it was, it was hard. It was yeah. so hard. And we couldn't tell my mother-in-law what was going on. And I didn't know if my husband was going to make it. So thank God for guidance for my, my, my pastors because I didn't know what to do. I had them on the phone the whole time. And it was hard. It was just hard for me. But um, I learned uh, in all this process that you only have to concentrate on what's real. Mm. And what's real to you. Because if you don't concentrate on what's not real to you, you're going to go crazy. I was... I was gonna go crazy. I mean, I had we had everything on top, and on top of that, we had pandemic. Uh, you know, we couldn't go nowhere. Uh, the only person that was able to go to the hospital was myself. So I was going one in the morning, early in the morning. I was seeing my mother-in-law, and then running to the other hospital to see my husband. So, and I, I, it was only me. Nobody else could do it. Wow. So it was just hard. And like you say, Carla, I was getting all the news. Like I was getting like, the news for my mother-in-law and take decisions from, for her, you know, like nobody else could be there. My husband couldn't make decisions. Yeah. So I was making decisions for my mother-in-law and then running to my husband and seeing, waiting for the doctor to see, you know, what's going to happen today. What's, what's, the, what's the news today? But in all of this, I seen God's hand. When my husband woke up from the heart surgery, I, he was with tubes and, you know, he was in a, on, a, on all these machines. And um, they told me, just go home. He's going to be in these machines for like two days, probably. And, and we wake him up later, just go home. And I went home and I, I remember talking to my daughters and then um, I started like taking a nap. And then he calls me FaceTime. <laughs> And I'm like, am I sleeping? Like, <laughs> what is this? Like, and I, and he's I, calling me on FaceTime on his phone. And then he's here. He said, Beba, I'm okay. I woke up. I asked to take the machines out of me. And I'm like, what in the world? But the doctor said you were not going to talk and, and all these things. He said, I'm okay. And, and, and that's when we started seeing the miracle on, on him. But the doctors were saying one thing. And... 
my husband was doing the opposite, like completely opposite. So I started saying, you know what? I'm going to listen to the doctors because I had to be a wife a wife and I'm gonna to listen to the doctors, but I'm also gonna start listening to God's voice and Amen. what he wants to do. And it's so hard. And I know you guys probably feel the same way. It's so hard to to hear the guy's vo- voice, you know, saying God's and everybody saying, Oh, he's alive. God still has something for him. When the doctors are telling you like hmm. all this, all these different and, and all these worst scenarios, like I came out one day out of the 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 hospital and the doctor told me we're going to give two more dialysis treatments we're going to give your husband two more chance to leave and then after that we're going to put him in hospice i just put my mother wow. in hospice, like and she didn't make it out so now they putting my husband in hospice i it was i i couldn't i was like you can't do that to me right now mm-hmm. like you can you can go um my my kids were uh, graduating. Uh, my son, my daughter was graduating college, and my son was graduating uh, high school. And he was applying for this school that was his dream school. I say, you need to make it. You need to make it just to see, you know, what we always dream. Because when we got when we were talking about getting married, uh, we always like we used to talk about uh, our future. And we used to say, imagine the day where we drop our kids to college or, and, and now we were living the, the future and, and all these things are happening at the same time. Yeah. So it was, it was hard, but it was, it was uh, a time to, to learn how to listen to God saying it's going to be okay. Just, you know, and apply what you learn in the Bible when the, God says, you know, have peace in me. You know, find that real peace in God. Like, learn how to find that peace. Mm. That and um, that that was kind of my experience. <laughs> I think I think my wife mentioned a a, a really important uh, word: applying what you learn. Yeah. And a lot of times we go through difficulties, and even those preachers, we preach about faith, we preach about believing. But sometimes when it happened to us, we don't apply that. <laughs> yeah. and, and I remember that being laid down when I wake up from the surgery and see a bunch of tubes, machines, and, and hearing doctors saying that I was not going to be able to move. I was like, no, I don't believe that my God is not going to let me, you know, let me be like this. Yeah. I remember that as I wake up, open my eyes. I say, where's my phone? I want to speak to my wife. Mm-hmm. And the nurse, because I had a nurse 24-7 mm-hmm. uh, saying, Mr. Rivera, you cannot move. I said, what should be you got me? And I was tied up to the bed. <laughs> and I was like, you better untie me. Because I'm going to break these things up. <laughs> and she was, Mr. Rivera, you're not supposed to move. And she untied me. And I was able to move. And I said, I want to go to the bathroom. I said, you, no, you got to go to the bathroom here. I said, I'm going to use that. I want to go to the toilet. And, she, and I remember, no, you cannot do that. I got to get somebody to help me. I said, okay, whatever you need to help you because I don't want to go to the bathroom. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, uh, but, you know, but applying the faith, mm-hmm. applying what you believe in. And you know what? I got to tell you, Danny, which I know also happens to you, that what helped me was my faith in Jesus. Yes. And I'm not saying this to be religious, whoever is listening to me. When you have, when you trust in Jesus, it's just, it gives you that peace. Yes. And I'm not telling you that it's not hard because it is hard, but you know that he's there with you. Yes. There's nothing better to feel that in your lowest moment, Jesus is with you. And he was with me. And I know it was with you, Danny. Yes, so it was. This, this, that's, why, that's why I'm here today. I could say that. And of course, because of this woman of God. Amen. You know, oh, because I, I, it, I say that it, every time. Because this woman of God, let me tell you, you know, she has been my rock. Uh, I thank God for her every day, every second. Because, you know, as a, as a man, I couldn't, you know, take her on my household. Yeah. Any longer because I was sick and yeah. and she stepped up. And that's why I tell every young man, every young lady, make sure when you marry, 
you marry the men and the woman that God has for you oh, and yeah. that they fear the Lord, that they fear the Lord. Amen. That's the most important thing. Amen. Um, I love that, yeah. that you spoke about um, how important your faith is because I think, and I know we only have a few minutes, but I think, you know, we, we can go to church for so many years, but it doesn't feel real until it has to be like, until yes. God is my only choice. And I remember being told by the doctors, the same thing, you know, your husband's not going to come off this machine. He might need a lung transplant. They don't wow. give those out very frequently. You, you know how that process of, of an organ transplant is. So I, I'm sitting here going, but we just got married. We were married yeah. a year and a half at that point. And we just got married. I was like, bought a house bought a house i was doing things with the district that i never thought i'd be able to do like i don't know it was crazy yeah it's like you have all these dreams and you start off you're going like oh this year is going to be amazing you know it's the year after the pandemic and then all of this happens and then you don't have a choice like god is the only choice and and it changes your life it changes the way you see the world it changes the way you go about things like the things you thought you were afraid of you're like i'm not even scared of that anymore because yeah. I, I know how bad it can really be yep. so i'm going to go after the things that god has you know called me to do so yeah. um if you only have a few minutes but if you guys could just leave us with some words of encouragement to people that might be going through a similar situation and are maybe they feel dealing, like they're at the end you know? yeah they're, they're dealing with illness or they're dealing with divorce or dealing with something in their in their life that looks like it's it's coming to an end or something like that. What is your encouragement to people that feel at their lowest? Uh, I tell them that there, there, there's hope. There's always hope. Mm. Uh, never give up. Uh, that, that, that's a word that uh, um, my dad always told me that could never exist on my back vocabulary. And that's giving up. Mm. Never give up. Never mm. give up. There's always hope, and uh, there's always hope in Jesus. Yeah. And uh, seek the Lord. If you want peace, if you want your situation to be fixed, uh, seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go to a church where you could be disciple the right way, and you could find Jesus. Because the only one that can give you hope is Jesus. Amen. No man can give you hope like Jesus can. No medicine can give you hope like Jesus can. And no doctor can give you hope like Jesus can. And let me tell you, the Lord always will put somebody in, in, your, in, your, in your way to bless you. Always, that. always, yeah. always, but always seek the Lord. Always seek the Lord. I remember, Daniel, that there was a, a, a technician that was connecting me to the dialysis machine. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me, he, he used to uh, serve the Lord before. Mm -hmm. and he was telling me, how can you say that there's hope if you are in dialysis? And I say, look, look at you. The Lord is using you to connect me to that machine that the Lord gave wisdom to somebody to make so I could be alive. Mm -hmm. So there's hope. There's hope in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> wow. So thank you guys so much for this conversation. Um, I, I believe that there are people listening that will be, you know, completely edified um, because I mean, to be honest, hearing uh, the story in, in, and hearing how much hope that you still want to give others, even after everything you've been through. And I know we haven't even scratched the surface, you know, of what, of your testimony and, and the things you guys have experienced. Um, but just with the little bit, it's absolutely mind blowing. And to the fact that you you still want to serve God, you still want to worship, you still want to want to disciple others. Incredible. Absolutely. You guys truly are, um, especially for for this home, you guys are an inspiration, you know, and I hope you guys know that, um, you know, throughout your entire process, you guys have truly inspired us. Um, so, again, we love you guys. And uh, and those that are listening, we hope that you guys were encouraged. Carla. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for sharing your story. There's people that need to hear that there's hope, even when you are literally at the end. I mean, good thing that we serve a God that that's not a limit for him. So thank you so, so much for sharing your story. Yes. And you guys are an inspiration for us. Yes. We're going through the same thing and um, we're watching you guys too and, <laughs> and taking that strength from you guys. Yeah. And thank yeah. you for, thank you for what you're doing. <laughs>